Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get my 1961 Ford Unibody back on the road. That's right, this one was a project and we got it. It needed a clutch, it hadn't run for a while, so uh, we got the old 223 running. We uh, ground the flywheel, boom tube did. Put a new clutch in it. Uh, we did all new brakes, I think we did a new fuel tank, it's got new exhaust. Drove it for a couple years, radiator went out last year, put a radiator in it. And then about halfway through the summer, I went out to the parking lot at work, coolant everywhere. Greta? was not happy that day. We'll be watching you. How dare you. Turns out it's the frost plug, freeze plug, expansion plug, whatever you want to call it, in between the bell housing and the back of the block. And it's like halfway over it. So we got to pull the engine out of this thing in order to replace that frost plug. And you dang right while we got it out of there, we're going to do them all. Maybe. We'll see once we get it out of there. Let's take a look at this thing. So this is a 1961. I believe it's got a replacement grill in it. Ford changes the grill from year to year. I can't tell them all apart, but this is a 61 Ford F100. 100 means half ton. And then they made a 250 and a 350, which was three quarter ton and one ton respectively. Why they didn't call them a 200 and a 300, I don't know. Front bumper's always been tweaked. This thing's got a mysterious history body damage wide. The hood is a different color, so that makes me think that's been replaced. It's been repainted, you can see some kind of cracking from some body work and just uh, repaint stuff. The grill has got this like zinc plating on it, so it makes me feel like it's been replaced, or maybe it's a different year grill. I don't know. Good buddy of mine had this thing. He was sitting out back. I asked him about it. He's like, yeah, I'll give you a good deal on it. Clutches out of it. He said it was a run and drive and pick up when he parked it, ran when parked, but he smoked the clutch because first gear is way too tall on this thing. And then I obviously put some taller tires on it, I'll show you those in a minute. Like I said, that's kind of where I got it, a buddy of mine, so this one probably isn't for sale, but I mean anything's for sale for the right price. Except that dog, you ain't for sale are you Duff? Yeah, you heard me talking about him. So I bought a Model A coupe project and it came with these wheels and tires, these are really tiny guys, what are you? Uh, you're not helping. Can you read the numbers? 195, 60, 15, just little babies. And then the back are like, what, a 315? 285, 70. This thing had like 15 by fives or 16 by fives, big tall skinnies. And the rear ends look really narrow in these pickups, so I wanted a wider tire in the back. Had these laying around, they held air, stuck them on. I haven't really driven this pickup a lot in the probably three, four years I've had it on the road just because it doesn't drive that great. It doesn't have overdrive. Like I said, first gear is terrible. The shift linkage leaves some work to be desired, but it is what it is. It's really cool because it's a unibody, which is the 61 to 63 Fords that uh, doesn't have this gap in between the box here. It's all part of it. These are not a unibody or a unit on frame or whatever you want to call it. These do have a frame underneath them, but it's short beds, which is pretty rare. They did make these in three quarter tons as well. And I don't know if you could get them in four-wheel drive. I know some guys have made them in a four-wheel drive. Maybe you could get them four-wheel drive. I don't know. Got a hooey in the door. I do think this thing was rolled over at one time. A lot of mud up here in the roof. There's some mud work going on there. But it's a pretty, pretty good pickup. Duff's going to check out the inside. Like I said, 223 in line six, three on the tree. The shifter was busted, so I had to put this new bell on there. And you can see she's been shifting hard. Ray Charles, he welded that. Shift linkage up there. You got the right one, baby. Yeah. Pretty bare bones in there. It's got this really sweet keychain from uh, Gettysburg Livestock Exchange. Dick Luby. Are you kidding me? That's the guy's name. Dick Luby. Wow. Wow. There's his number if you want to get a hold of him. But yeah, pretty cool keychain, I always thought. I think that's where this thing come from. What is it, the Cathedral on the Prairie in South Dakota? Hoving? Hoven, South Dakota, in there somewhere, Gettysburg, Bowdle, the Tower City, whatever you want to call it. It's got a pretty neat 
Channel Master radio. That's clearly not factory. No headliner in it. So you're always looking at all these scratches and dents from when they kind of repaired -ish the roof. Seat's pretty good shape. It's been recovered. It's kind of tearing. There's that new fuel tank I put in. Sorry, man. I think I put a new sending unit in it too. It's got the gun rack, of course. Everything up here does. Tech tip of the day, always keep some spare koozies on your shifter, whether it's a column shift or a floor shift. Real handy. But yeah, super solid pickup. I mean, there's a couple of pinholes down here. Well, maybe a little bit worse than pinholes, but it's solid on the steps, solid in the cab corners, solid in the quarters. Floor ain't all beat up or rusty. Not a bunch of whiskey dents in the corners. There's a little in there. The tailgates on these things, I always thought were like an afterthought. It's like, hey, we got to get this thing out on Friday, but we're not done with the tailgate. Ford's like, F it, ship it. I mean, at least they don't have the chains hanging out here, but had kind of a weird latch design that left a lot to be desired. They like to rust out in the hinge down here. You can see somebody slid some galvanized pipe in there to fix it. Aftermarket bumper. I do have a little bit better tailgate in about the same color. Quick dick would be proud. We got a number nine wire latching her over here. A man will never get tired of pulling on his number nine wire. Yeah, it just always irritated me the tailgates on these things. It sits way too high. It's got a straight axle on the front and then uh, nine inch in the rear. Nine inch is super sloppy. It needs a different nine inch. The thing about the three speed in this thing, I think it's got like 370 gears in the rear because it, it's humming down the road pretty good even with those tall tires. But like first gear, you can do like 30 miles an hour, but just super hard on the clutch taking off. And I think that's why this clutch was smoked when I got it. And it looked like the clutch had been smoked before that. It needs a different transmission. I'm thinking an overdrive would be good. And really, to be honest, it needs a V8 and an overdrive and everything else. But because it runs so good and it just works, we're gonna pull it up, put a frost plug in it and just fix it. Ideally someday I'd like to put a Dakota front suspension in it in a, Maybe an LS and an overdrive just to piss people off. Not to piss people off, because they work and because it's my pickup and I'll do what I want. We're just going to leave her for now, so settle down, Purist. You Ford guys are the angriest. If you're going to be mean about pickups, go don't work on Ford. That's like what half my fleet is, is Fords. You're fine. I hate them all equally. Doesn't matter if it's Ford, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Chevy. It doesn't matter. Stop being so angry. But uh, yeah, the nine inch is slopped out. The king pins are slopped out. This thing's got some miles on it. There's no mirrors on the outside. I think there should have been a factory one right here. Somebody had some add-on ones there. Maybe it went down to there, tore that hole in it. It's just got, it's got a pretty cool patina to it. It's just super dry and super straight for up here. And it's a short bed unibody. So kind of a rare rig. I think I bought an exhaust kit and put on here. I don't think BoomTube did the exhaust. BoomTube did grind the resurf. Didn't resurface flywheel. I had the diesel shop do that actually. I didn't know he had one at that time. The factory hub caps will fit on here. I have Adam on here. I just don't really like the looks of them. Kind of like the way it looks, you know, with these steelies, but it's it needs a bigger tire in the front and it needs to come down in the rear. Probably needs a smaller tire on the rear to be honest, but with the factory wheels are just spaced in so far. It just drove me nuts. Again, front fender's got a little hooey to it, and you can see she's been tweaked. The bumper's been tweaked. I'd like to find a chrome grill and a chrome bumper and put on it, but we'll get to that point someday, maybe. Just get her back on the road. Windshield's got a crack. It's got some blemishes, but it's a pretty good pickup. Duff likes it. He's uh, ridden in her a few times. You can see all the pig mats that we had to put in the parking lot at work, so Greta didn't... Uh, Call the EPA on us. And they also make a good pillow, don't they, Duff? Yeah. Guess I'll be opening the hood on my own. Or are you going to come get it? You going to help out? Here we go. So here it is. The good old 223 inline six. Uh, I pressure washed the snot out of it before we put the clutch in it. Yeah, it's got all new wheel cylinders, new master cylinder. Radiator popped. Couldn't find one, so I got this aluminum one that I don't really care for it, but they're cheap and they work. No flexi hoses, put all new hoses, new belts, all that stuff. I think I put new plugs and wires and cap and rotor and all that, because that's usually what I do. Probably. Got the hugest battery tray ever, so you can just get a monster of a battery in there. Runs really good, super quiet. You can't even hear this thing running. I really dig it. Spare belt up here. Looks like somebody's uh, 
put a Napa voltage regulator on it. I think it's still a generator. Yep, still a generator. I think I put a thermostat and a thermostat housing on it. That must have happened about when the radiator popped. I don't think I've opened up the carburetor. I think I got a new carb kit for it, but this one just works good enough, so we leave it. But yeah, right back there between that bell housing and the block, there's a freeze plug. And she shot. So we gotta pull that out. And I think we gotta to pull the whole transmission as well. I don't know. I think you gotta leave the bell housing with it, otherwise you gotta take the flywheel off and so on. And I don't know, we're gonna get it out of here, figure it out. So I'm gonna drain some coolant, pull the hood off, some light in there, start unhooking things. Should be pretty easy to pull out. I hate six cylinders because there's just no good way to hook a chain on them. With slant sixes, they do have a couple of pedestals for hooking chains, so that's nice, but we shall see. I don't think I can get the whole transmission and tranny out at once, but we shall see what we can do. All right, you guys can watch me work in super fast mode. See you in a minute. So I think we're uh, pretty much wrapped up up here. Radiator, upper and lower radiator hoses, heater hoses, fuel hose, generator wiring, exhaust. That came off easy because that's new. Getting the radiator stuff, that was all new. I got the wire off for the coil and the temp sensor and the oil sensor for the starter. Looks like we got a bracket that's holding the exhaust that ties the engine will have to take off. There's a ground strap over here, throttle linkage, air cleaner. Pretty much got everything up here. Oh yeah, that's it. This is a 223. The way I can tell a 215, kind of a one year only deal in 53. That's what the 53 F100 had. And the 223, the carburetor and exhaust is on this side. And then your later 200s, 240s, 300s is all on this side. And nothing fricking interchanges between the two of them because Ford things. This does look like it's got the same style engine mount as the 62 Y block. So that's the other engine you could get in these. You could either get this 223.6 or like a 292 Y block. So I think if we had the right bell housing, and maybe this bell housing is the same, we could drop a Y block right in here. But I already got the throttle linkage and it works for this engine and the exhaust is new and we got the right radiator hoses and all that. So we're just going back the way it is. And I like simplicity and it works and it, it's already here. It's not going to cost... Nothing but a whole bunch of freaking time. Oh yeah, and I think I should put an exhaust manifold gasket in it. I seem to remember this blowing out. I was thinking I had one on the shelf the other day when I was looking for Y-block gaskets. So, I guess it doesn't really matter. This is just as easy to replace in the engine. That's the beauty of these things. There's so much room in here. In six cylinders, there's half as much exhaust to take off when you're swapping things out. And you got room to get at the bell housing bolts and stuff. But I think... Yeah, I think we got to pull the whole bell housing out with the engine. And I don't think we can get them all out at the same time with the transmission. So I think we got to unbolt the transmission and leave that kind of hang there. We got to do the clutch stuff. Dang it, forgot about that. And uh, also, that was dumb. I should have went underneath and did all that stuff first because now we got coolant down there. Don't worry, Greta. None of it made it to the floor drain. So we're going to get that clutch done. Then we're going to jack it up in the air. And we're going to do everything under there. And Duff's just going to hang out here. Really? Really like those uh, pig mats as a pillow, don't you? No comment. All right, back to work. Sorry, buddy. You go to sleep. There you can see all the coolant running down the back of the head and the bell housing from that leak I was telling you about. So it looks like it might just be easiest just to pull that whole transmission out of there because it's just a cute little guy. I'll have to drop the drive shaft because I don't think you can sneak the flywheel. Yeah, it'll just be easiest that way. We'll have to take these two bell housing mount, engine mount bolts out. Isn't that a cute little guy? If somebody's got an overdrive for one of these, let me know. Because it's anything like a GM, 
all the uh, shift linkage is the same. It's just a little bit longer and you have to change the drive shaft length. And I'm, I take that back. I didn't even have to change the drive shaft length and white lining, but that stock transmission was quite a bit longer. Got the shift linkage unhooked up there, but I might have to unhook it down here too, just so we don't screw it up. Let's see if I can show you how bad this rear end is. See, look at that. New brake lines, crappy old shocks. Pinion seal's leaking. Honestly, we can't do it because I shifted into gear, but this thing's got like a ton of play back and forth. I just felt that now. She's got a huge whammy in the drive shaft. Whoops. But yeah, this pickup is super good underneath. Way bueno. No rust in the floors or the steps. Little bit in that cab mount and a little bit in the floor. And Ray Charles also maybe welded that fender on. But yeah, this thing's pretty, pretty dry for around here. So I'm gonna pull that speedo cable and those four bolts holding the transmission and the drive shaft. Get this thing out of here. Well, that could be why the speedometer doesn't work. No gear on the end of it. Sure enough. Hmm, wonder where that went. Freaking strong I am. Just kidding. Watch me do something stupid now. Oh, like spill oil all over. Oh. Of course that link didn't get caught. Look at that nice new clutch in there. Alright, engine mount bolts. Be about done here. Tech tip of the day when you lay transmissions down, all the oil runs out of them. Exxon Valdez style. One of the worst oil spills in US history. So we're gonna get some t-shirts and wipe that up because I hate floor dry. There. Somewhat better. Hate floor dry because it just gets kicked everywhere. Some of the floor dry, if you don't get the white stuff, you get the gray stuff, really sucks because it doesn't do anything. The floor dirt's better at absorbing the uh, stains. Yeah, that's just me. And then once we get her out of here, we'll just clean her down, soak down the floor a bit and wipe her up and good to go. So now we gotta figure out where to hook the chain up, Duff. You wanna come out here and show us? Or are you good just curling up with your pig mats in there? That'll do, pig, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Usually I just wrap it on the intake manifold, but I feel like there's got to be a better way. I don't really want to pull a head bolt out, and plus, they're pretty tight against the valve cover. Hmm. Maybe we pull one of these intake bolts out, put a longer one, since they got to come out anyway. Since this has got to come off, there's an idea. We just take the whole intake and exhaust manifold off and use those bolts. Seem like a terrible idea? I think not. So we had a, a Tiffany and she said, look at the internet. So we looked at the internet. Apparently there was a tool that bolted on these two bolts and it kind of came over here. And right about here it had two little notches in there. This notch was for if you were just pulling the engine. This notch was for if you're pulling the engine and transmission. Well, we don't have this KR Wilson KAD tool, but did a little research and I don't know, ended up on some F100 form and there's a 7 16 bolt down here. That's for the, uh, when you got side engine mounts, there's these three bolts. So we hooked into that one and then we hooked into that one. So, I mean, those are meant to hold the whole engine and they're a 7 16 versus a 3 ace bolt. So, we'll see what happens. What say you, sleepyhead? All right, we'll do without you. Thanks a lot. She's out. Look at that sweet new clutch. Probably only got a couple hundred miles on it. And that grease circ on the throw all bearing that's never been greased. Whoopsies. And there is the reason we're pulling it out. Ford snuck 
that frost plug right in there. You can see I was scratching at that one like, oh, that ain't leaking. No, oh, it's that guy. I think we probably could have pulled this bell housing off when it was in there, and it does look like it's the same as a Y block. So, there's that. Also, I did pressure wash this thing while it was in there, and obviously I could have got it a lot better, so stay tuned, you might get some pressure washing out of us yet. Those ones look good. Plus they're pretty easy to replace when they're all together. That one's pretty crusty and a pain to replace. I think that's the one that killed, or made us pull out the engine in that uh, Bronco. Go check out that video if you haven't watched it. 66 Ford Bronco with a 206 in it. But this guy, what a bugger. Like at least you could drill a hole in the firewall if you really had to to get that one in if you were in a pinch. This one, you're hosed. Might have been easier to just block up the engine, pull the bell housing and drop it out the bottom, but I think it's uh, eight o'clock now. I started at six, swapping batteries out and cameras, moving cameras around, looking on the internet. So two hours to pull it out, not bad. And then obviously I struggled with hooking the chain up and some stuff. So pretty sure I could have this thing out in an hour easy next time and have a lot less of a mess so let's get this bell housing off of here see if we can get a frost plug out hopefully i got one on hand if not i guess we'll find one tomorrow well i got that nice new clutch and resurface flywheel and I can't remember if we flipped the ring gear or what we did on this one. I know we had to do ring gear work on this guy too. Maybe we just flipped it around or we found a different flywheel. Because I know I ordered a replacement one and it did not fit. Look at this cute little removable wing nut road draft tube. I wonder if there's like a filter in there or something. Look at how uncute that frost plug is though. I can see why it rots out. All the dirt sits right in there. How's this one? It's getting replaced is what it is. I suppose, probably gotta pull the flywheel to get good access to that. Whatever, easy enough. It's all been off before recently, so. Guess we'll blow that apart and we'll figure out what size it is. I wanna find out what size I need tonight. So if I can get, if I need to get one, get one tomorrow. Alrighty. Pull apart a clutch that I just put on. That would have been a good time. Oh, I suppose I couldn't have. So, and then the other thing is, there's this uh, plate back here. I don't know what they call that. Inspection cover thinger. And that bolts to the bell housing too. So you need to uh, take that off from the bell housing to get it apart. So I think you could pull it out from underneath and get at all this, but it wouldn't be much fun laying on your back trying to knock that in there either. So I, th I think we did it right for once. Maybe. There's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. But I'm almost dead positive that that starter and that bell housing and that flywheel are interchangeable with a Y block. Doesn't really matter because we're not putting a Y block in it. All right, back at her. Well, it's definitely a good deal. We took that all apart because uh, looks like there's two more here. I think that one's for the camshaft though. We'll just leave that. They're kind of a pain to get out because you can't knock them in and spin them out like you can with these. Should just be oil behind that one. Doesn't look like much dirt rotted it from this side. But this guy on the other hand, no bueno. Let me get my pokey poke here. My favorite screwdriver, thanks Britt Miller. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't look as bad as it is from the outside, but it's definitely getting replaced because we're not doing this again. Oh, it's just 60 years of crud stuck in there. My preferred method is to knock them in and kind of get them spun sideways. So just hit on one side and then grab them with the old locking pliers and pop them out. I know some people like putting a self-tapper in it and then putting a slide hammer. My grandpa, he would just knock them in and leave them in there. And he did it for 50 years while running the shop. So it worked for him, I guess. I just don't like having more stuff in there than needs to be in there. Alrighty, be a good time to put a rear main seal in. Ha, <laughs> not happening. Look at that nice national pilot bearing we put in the last time. Nothing but the finest for... That's the other thing is, 
I don't really have a nickname for this thing. Minty? Eh, not really feeling it. I guess I just call it the uni or the unibody. We're definitely open to suggestions if you got something. All right. Let's do some frost plugs. So you can see I just tapped on the left side there, which was, I thought, the most solid side. And we'll clamp on with this guy, pop right out, allegedly. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh man. Heating issues? Yeah, never heard of them. This thing did like to push a little heat. Ugh. Ew. Yeah, she did maybe rot it out from the inside a little bit. Holy sludge, Batman. Just for S's and G's, we might knock them all out. Stick the pressure washer in there. See what we can't get out of there. I'm sure the cooling system will be a lot happier. Should have done this before I stuck a new radiator in it and slugged that thing all up with trash. Ew. Is the head gonna be any less sludgy? Nope, certainly not. Why is it always on these Fords? Do Ford owners not do any maintenance? I know they get upset when you talk about them in a negative way. Angry Ford owners. Well, Doug, for my stash, I got some Dorman P48-Cs for the back of the engine. And I think these are two and a 16th too as well. So I probably got three more. And let's see what we can see. I think it's all oily. I think that the oil, wherever from that, oh, that is hooked into the oil system. No wonder. We're gonna wanna put that one back in before we pressure wash or we're gonna fill the oil pan full of uh, sludge. Weird. So that's uh, hooked up to that road draft tube. But yeah, you can see just all the sludge in there. And I'm guessing these ones had rotted out because those look pretty dang fresh. You can still see the marks or somebody knocked them in. I don't think it was me that put them in. I don't remember doing that. But we'll probably uh, knock those out just so we can pressure wash in there more gooder. But it's dark out and we ain't pressure washing in the dark. So we're going to come back tomorrow when you're all rested up, right? Right. You all ready to call it a night? Yeah. What are you doing? All right. It's daylight. It's four degrees out. Got these frost plugs knocked out. Let's do some pressure washing. Mainly uh, just to get these cleaned up. Oh, I gotta knock this guy in. Forgot about that. All right, I'm gonna knock that in so we don't get a bunch of water in the oil. We're gonna do some pressure washing. See you old pudding come up here and pressure wash with his shirt off when it's four degrees out. Oh yeah. Yeah, glad we put the uh, bibs and everything on. Pretty sure I'm gonna get sick from this too. <clears throat> Maybe it's just, just need a sandwich to <clears throat> clear my throat. But yeah, she's uh, she's chilly out there. I think we got her cleaned up pretty good though. We did get a fair amount of rust to come out of there. Probably wouldn't hurt to uh, run this thing, some type of flush additive through it a few times, but I think it'll be good. I'm gonna let her thaw out a bit. I'm gonna try to thaw my fingers out. Duff's gonna thaw out in the cab and curl up with his pig mats. See you guys in a minute. So I took some memory cloth, cleaned out the boards here, and now we'll put some black RTV on there and whammy these suckers in because we definitely don't want that one leaking. And then we'll uh, put everything back together. I don't know, very much to it. Is there duff? What are we missing? Other than an LS, that's what we should be doing. No? 
Oh, fine, we'll go back this way. So here's my feeling on the LS swap. This thing's all together and it was working. When I got it, like I said, I needed a clutch and it was way easier to just put a clutch in it than it was to completely swap everything. Along with the clutch, you know, later I gave it a tune up, did all the brakes, which you could put an LS in it with the brakes that are in it. And then I did exhaust, which you'd be throwing that away. Fuel tank, you'd probably be throwing that away. But there's other stuff like the radiator hoses. Radiator you could probably use with an LS. So, I mean, I got a few bucks stuck towards sticking with this six cylinder. And the big thing with going with an LS in this is not only do you have the cost of the engine and the transmission, but then you're changing the steering column and uh, you're going to go to disc brakes and I'd probably go with independent front suspension and then I'm going to lower it and then it just snowballs and it's all new dual exhaust and then it's probably a different radiator, different radiator hoses. And I mean, next thing you know, your weekend $500 LS swap is dragging out over six months, eight months and costing you you know, by the time you buy a front end and do exhaust and buy an engine and a fuel tank and a transmission and a steering column, because the steering column's built onto the column, and buy some different wheels and tires and a notch for the back, get a drive shaft made. I mean, five grand is minimum. And you could have eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars into this thing where I probably have stuck yeah, the exhaust was like two hundred bucks, radiator was two hundred bucks. Clutch and tune-up stuff was like another 300 bucks. Other than the cost of the pickup, wheels and tires kind of came with a package deal, but let's just say I got a thousand bucks into those because they are brand new wheels. They are brand new 15 year old tires. I mean, I've probably only stuck another 1,500 or 2,000 bucks in this thing and uh, I can jump in it and drive it. So that's why we're leaving it as that because LS swaps really snowball. And that's why I haven't done it yet because this thing works the way it is. Not the greatest, but she works. Remind me to uh, blow out that distributor cap when we get ready to fire it up. Get that moisture out of there because I'm sure she's going to be wet. Kind of like the uh, last engine we pressure washed. Oh, it's all wet in here. From the uh, pressure washing. Another reason we don't do that. Oakley dokley. Oakley dokley. You hold down that bench seat. I'm going to... Knock in some freeze plugs. Freeze plugs? Freeze plugs. Frost plugs. Soft plugs. Core plugs. So I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but it's an installer for driving in soft plugs. And you're supposed to be able to get in tight areas. And this frost plug right here in the middle was right behind the exhaust manifold so I thought I could use this to drive it in. Turns out yeah, it doesn't work as great as I thought it would. The local Ford garage they sold off most of the contents in that place here last summer? Late last fall? Something like that. And uh, I'd seen these kits before and I picked this up. It's got different interchangeable ends for different size frost plugs. So yeah, I thought, oh, it's kind of cool because it's wider, so it should stop the frost plug from going in too far. But I just couldn't get her at quite the right angle. And I know I could have waited until I took that manifold off, but my thought was it'll be in the vehicle when I do that. And I'll forget to put that freeze plug in it. And then I'll have to take everything back apart to do it. So we got her snuck in there. Should be good to go now. I did put brass ones on the outside here because I'm out of these... Oh, I did have one more of these left, and I thought it would look dumb with one galvanized one on the outside and two brass ones. And I know everybody likes the brass ones, but they're expensive. These things are like three bucks a piece. That adds up. You got three, six. That's like twenty dollars right there. So we just put the uh, steel ones in. Got some more steel ones on order to put in the shelf when this happens again, because I think these are the same size that were in that Y block. So. Well, it's pretty common for these in Fords to be two and a sixteenth inches in diameter and to go bad. Yeah, I think we can stick the bell housing and flywheel and all that good stuff on there. And we're going to just stick this thing back in. All right, we got some blue Loctite on these suckers. And we use our flywheel 
folder from El Jefe that he donated to us because we broke the last one. And we're going to torque these to 90 foot pounds, right, Wes? All right, here we go. Easy lemon squeezy. This whole tecton here, you don't set it back to zero, you set it back to 25. Don't ask me why. It's supposed to help it keep it set, keep its calibration, because it's calibrationed and tested. Yeah, that's what I said, calibrated and tested. All right, got our clutch alignment tool. You guys are used to seeing that. We're gonna set this son of a biscuit on here. Make sure you use the right bolts. I think I showed you what bolts you got to use in the 62 Ford F100 video. It's these little short 5 16ths that got that shoulder on there. Four bolt stretch. Go Google what bolt stretch is if you want to know, because I'll explain it terribly. It's basically clamp load. It turns the bolt into a spring. Some guys say to use blue Loctite on these. These have lock washers on them, which I'm not a firm believer in, but I guess I've never put Loctite on these. I'm going to torque them to 25 feet pounds. Is, is. Snug them up with a ratchet first. Once we get this aligned. Man, 25 foot pounds ain't much. But they are just in the 560. Yeah, ready for a bell housing. We'll hit that quick with the super scraper. Just so we don't uh, get any material in between the mating surfaces. We a good clamp load on here too. Tech tip of the day, scrape your junk off over a trash can or cardboard box. So it's not all over your floor and you don't stomp it into the ground. You have to clean it up later. We're gonna give the old throw up bearing a shot of grease before we stick her on there. If it'll take grease. There. And we'll slide that in there. You always want to have this big flat bearing surface up against your clutch forks. Put this drain plug back in for the cooling system. Of course, that was all plugged up with crap. So if you ever need to drain the block, let's plug you take out on 223. Got our inspection cover on, bell housing, throw out bearing, got starter on. She's pretty much ready to stick back in there. And then we'll hook the transmission back up once it's in there. And then we'll uh, pull this intake and exhaust off and put a gasket in there. I should check to make sure I got one of those. I'm pretty sure I do, but That'd be my luck, tear it all apart. I'll have a new gasket. I did put a valve cover gasket in it once because that was leaking real bad. And the thermostat gasket. That wasn't leaking, it just needed a thermostat. Probably because all the crud that's in there. Could probably use a water pump too. We're sticking it in there. See the end of the gasket over here is blown out. And the back end is blown out and she's blown out in the bottom. 
Looks like that one's been replaced recently, so. Well, not recently, but at one time. So we'll go ahead and clean that up. Stick her back together. Everything went pretty good taking it off. I did make sure to check that I had a gasket before I did that. It took me a little while to find it. Probably had it for a couple years. But uh, these two bolts down here are kind of hidden. They're uh, sneaky bastards, so make sure you get those. Alrighty. Let's uh, do a little cleaning. We got our MS9960 Felpro gasket set. This is the flange that goes between the exhaust pipe and the manifold. This is a donut and does not go in here because this application does not have a donut. It didn't have one before. I don't think one goes in there. That's our exhaust and intake gasket, I guess. And this is the gasket that goes between the intake and the exhaust. We're not taking that apart because uh, from my experience, those bolts just break off and they really I don't ever seem to leak in there. I mean, I haven't had any that do that. So yeah, and it's just a heat riser. Anyway, I don't think exhaust actually, well, uh, maybe it does. Yeah, I don't think this, yeah, this is not cut for a donut. So we're just using that flange gasket. Obviously you wouldn't have both. Maybe it's not obvious to everybody, but you don't. There's a little crud stuck on the back of this thing. Did you just call the poop crud? I didn't say mud, I said crud. Got everything buttoned up there on the intake. I'm gonna wait to do the exhaust until we get everything wrapped up underneath with the transmission because there's a mount over on that other side, hanger type doohickey. And then I'm gonna just do the same with the clutch. Eh, maybe we can get the clutch done. Got a ground strap we gotta put on over here. I was gonna hook up the generator and apparently we got a little rough with one of those eyelets or she was on her way out. So we gotta put a new one of them on. Just. Nothing ever comes easy around here. All right, back at her. So we got the coolant topped off. Yes, I did mix it. Yes, it's Napa, but I mean, those guys can't screw up coolant, can they? It's probably made by somebody else. Manufactured for Napa. Hmm, I don't know who makes it. Napa doesn't let them put who makes the stuff in here. Anyway, uh, it'll cause you to not have kids in California. So I don't know what you guys use in California, but probably fairy dust and unicorn farts. Whatever works for you. Use our handy dandy funnel here to spill almost nothing. I did pull off the top heater hose here to get the air bubble out. We got quite a bit more in when I did that. So that's your tech tip of the day. Always uh, try to unhook at the highest point, your highest heater hose, because if you unhook it here, it's just gonna run out the tank there, but whatever, that's what I do. It's probably not the right way. 
So I think we're pretty much wrapped up up here. Also, Ford radiator mounts suck. They got these clippy bolts, and over there, I think the core support's kind of tweaked a little bit. So I couldn't get the bolt in, so I had to put a nut on the back side, and I had to give her the old reach around, and laying on my back, the reach around, things weren't going real well, but we got her in there. We got a 3 ace bolt with a whiz nut on it. And I think we're done up here. Everything's wired up over here. Everything's hooked up on the carbonator. Generator's wired up. Belt's on. Radiator hose are hooked up. Engine mount's tight. Go to the exhaust manifold or hold to the downpipe. We'll get that later. We should grease that clutch. We gotta hook the clutch up. We'll do that all underneath. But I wanted to put coolant in it to see if my freeze plug was leaking. Duff said there's nothing on the ground. He's looking right now. He's a good pup. Keeping an eye over there. Make sure nothing's leaking. So now I guess we can stick her back together. Also, looks like they put a different hood hinge on here. This has got that zinc plating on it too. Yellow zinc versus the uh, clear zinc on these front end parts. So I think this thing was in a pretty good wreck at one point. Also, you'll notice I'm, uh, I'm wearing some flannel in the stocking cap. It's a good thing we pressure washed yesterday because this morning on my way to work, it was negative 26. Let's see what it's at now. Let's just see. Podunk, North Dakota, 7 p.m. on February 3rd. No way it got above zero. It is right at zero. High of seven, low of negative 24. She cold. Yeah, it's zero right now, one o'clock at 9 p.m. It's literally warming up through the night. That's how cold it was. 3 a.m. it gets up to a high of seven degrees. And then 7 a.m. it's negative four. Stays uh, negative single digits till 6 p.m. Guess what? Saturday, 30 degrees. Monday, 34. Tuesday, 36. Heat wave. We're going to be out there in our t shirts, pressure washing. Just kidding. That being said, I think he said he put a new blower motor in this thing and he's got it wired up backwards. Um, yeah, we're going to test drive this thing. It'll be nice out on Saturday, but we should uh, diagnose that heater core. So I'm going to go underneath. And put those engine mounts in, get the transmission in there, clutch linkage, shift linkage, speedo cable, drive shaft, all that good stuff. See you guys in a minute. Well, you're going to do it? Have at it. You can run the impact without, you don't need a thumb, just your trigger finger. Gets all upset when I bring up the thumb thing. Fine, I'll do it. Oh yeah, Duff says, before we forget, these aren't the Grip Mat brand, they're the Amazon cheapy knockoffs. I'll probably forget to put a link in the description, but these things are pretty good for uh, working on junk, especially for hardware, but you can hold a lot of tools in there too. Keeps everything from rolling around. These are the clips that Ford has for the radiator. Of course, these fine thread bolts for some reason, and this one broke. You can't get at the back side without pulling the grill out. Just muy suck. Anywho, grip mats, probably made in USA, get them. These ones, third of the price or half the price, Duff approved. The paw, I don't know what you do. They're good, check in them. I haven't used them that much yet. I've had them for quite a while, but they're good. So these funnels. All that being said about coolant, when I put something together like this, I usually leave a half a jug of coolant or a jug of coolant, whatever, in the cab. So A, it reminds me, we should check that coolant and B, if you do have an air bubble in here and you're out of coolant or it's low when you do check it, you got coolant with you. So after you do something like this, I always throw the jug of coolant in the vehicle and you know, run it for a tank of fuel before you put the jug back on the shelf. Your other sweet tech tip of the day from Mortsky. All right, try number three with this GoPro. Third time's a charm, right Duff? So I usually keep notes on all my vehicles with uh, what when I changed oil, when I put tires on them, and what they need, because I got a whole frickin' fleet of these things, and by fleet I mean there's probably 20 some vehicles in there. This thing said kingpins. I was like, what? It needs kingpins? Yeah, check this out. So left, right, that's like your tie rod ends and steering, tight. Vertical kingpins, watch this. Yeah, that's not the wheel bearing. Toasty, toasty. So we need kingpins, which isn't gonna get fixed. 
This pickup's got some miles on it. Also, check out the Delco Pleasurizer shocks. Man, I wish they'd still name stuff like that. You're not impressed with the old Pleasurizer stuff? Yeah, you wouldn't. You just want to go for rides. All right, now we're going underneath. Oh yeah, I was going to show them the transfusion. So I pulled that thing out of the pan and uh, hosed her down with some brake cleaner to try to get rid of some of the oil that's on it. Look at that, you can still see, what's that, like 114 painted on the top, assembly line paint. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Look, there's still some assembly lube from when I put it together the last time. Such a cute little transmission, and I don't know why Ford had to use these, I don't know, this oddball oblong pattern. Like, why isn't it perfectly rectangular or square or whatever? If somebody knows, tell me. Then again, I guess you never see the ears break off these like you do on a Muncie. Got the 8090 ready to pump in there. That stuff was real thick and sludgy that was in there. We should almost get it in place and then drain it completely. Although it should be pretty much drained, right Duff? Yeah, he says it's drained. And we'll pump that back full. And we're about running out of 8090s. So we're gonna have to go get some of that. I never thought in my life I'd go through five gallons. This is like 10 gallons I've gone through now. And that thing probably holds, I don't know. What's it old? Maybe three quarts, three and a half, four tops, right, Duff? All right, less yakking, more transmission installing. So here's the other thing that's on the list for this pickup, the rear diff. So you should have a little bit of backlash. I don't know what you're supposed to have. I would say a couple of degrees is good. You know, five degrees, probably all right, 10 degrees. This thing is worn out. I mean, that's like 25 degrees over the play. Yeah, she needs gone through. I'm guessing it's in the ring and pinion just being worn out, but who knows? Because there's not any play forward and backward. It's just, I think it's the way the, the gears mesh between the ring gear and the pinion. That's what it's gotta be, right? Unless the axle splines or the spider gears are that bad, but I doubt it. Also, look at the stack of leaves. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves. Plus a five leaf overload. The old uni, she was meant to haul. And even in 1961, Ford was still using wood to mount their beds. Classic. And giant rubber blocks. Nice fuel tank ain't leaking on this one yet. Oh yeah, it's got a new one in it, Never mind. All right, slip a drive shaft in, and then we'll uh, top the transmission off. I think we can go up top and hook up the linkage. Oh, we gotta finish this exhaust hookup down here yet, too. All right, easy peasy. Drive shafts in, transmission's in, oil's in, speedo cable's in, clutch is in. We gotta hook up our shift linkage. Otherwise, we're pretty much good. Maybe check the oil in the engine. Can't have that many miles on it. Like I said, I uh, haven't had this pickup on the road very much. Right, Duff? Yeah. Always some issue with this pickup. Okay. I think we're done down here. We need a lift, don't we? Don't buy me one though, because we don't have a ton of ceiling. 
Okay, there we go. Well, we got our tools all picked up. I like to do that before the end of the night, but sometimes I'm in the middle of a project. I just leave them out. Check the dipstick. It's there. It's got liquid on it. Exhaust is hooked up. Clutch is greased. Shift linkage is hooked up. Hook the battery up. I don't know how good that's going to be. And in theory, this thing should pop right off because it was always running. Puked all the coolant out, so we really didn't change anything. We just went through a whole lot of work to uh, put a freeze plug in. Oh, we got a new exhaust gasket. Almost forgot the exhaust gasket. You think it's going to fire up, Duff? All right, let's see what happens. Duff, he's uh, enthusiastic. Are you want me to move the pig mats out of the way so you can sit over there? Good call. Hey, shout out to Sobering. Go check their channel out if you haven't. They're up in Kanukistan. Oh, somebody got mad when I call it Kanukistan. Sorry if that offends you. Oh, I know. You just need some pettage. All right. Hey, let's see if that fan works. So we gotta turn the key on for that. Well, where's the headlights? Do we even have a battery? Yeah, we're gonna have to slop a battery in it. That one's dead. Who'd have thunk? Uh, shout out to our battery sponsor this week, uh, Trucker Bob. He's up in Kanukistan too, I think. He's got us a fresh DT78 Interstate. Let's uh, stick that in there. I'll do it. You just stay, stay still. Don't worry about it. Headlights are working, so we got battery power. Oh yeah, gotta tighten that cramp up. Dirk a dirk. All right, now we should be good to go. You want to tap the key, try it? You are tuckered. It's been a rough day. A rough day for Duff. No way. Pops right off, idles. It's like it was staged. Cold-blooded. But if we give it some choke, it'll come out of it. This one? Oh, we didn't hook that up, I bet. Yep. You gotta hook that guy up. Oh, we gotta take the choke off, and then it runs more gooder. All right, let's address that. This thing is so quiet. It isn't even all smoky in here. This thing has like no compression though. You put it in gear and park on a hill and it rolls away on you. It's uh, not good, but doesn't have any blow by. I don't think. We probably didn't even drive it enough to know if it uses oil. Duff, you want to push that choke knob in? That'd be great. It was already all the way in, he said. There. Maybe put an air cleaner on it, too. Good old oil bath. Oh, yeah. She's nice and clean. No, oh, she's got a little blow-by. Not bad for his... Worn out as the rear end and kingpins and everything else is. Okay, what's the deal? That only goes on one way. Wow, good work, Ford. Now should we try with the choke off? At least we know it's in neutral. God, this thing is so good. Doesn't smoke at startup. 
can't even hardly hear it. Like literally all you hear is the valve train, like not even valve train noise, just valve train doing valve train things. Probably could have put some engine mounts in it while I was in there. They look pretty chewy, but they'll be okay. And a water pump, but no leaks. Oh yeah. Golden. Check that uh, heater out. Oh, this thing is so good, Duff. All right, Dick Luby on fans. We turn this. It's making noise. Is it blowing? Or is it sucking? I think it's blowing. Pull for defrost. I mean. It's definitely not sucking air. He's got to wire it wired up the right way. He just doesn't know what he's talking about. Did really the knob just come out the end of that thing? Yep. Oh. The cigarette lighter is the only one left, other than this guy. Just be strong, little white sleeve. Is there mouses in there? Is Mickey in there? Or is it Fival? Yeah, I don't know. It's in the ashtray. Anything good? No darts. Glove box? No, nope, nothing good there either. Here's an inspection from 1971. Oh, there's high. High comes before low. That low is pretty good. How silly is that? It goes off, high, low. Doesn't it? Shouldn't it go off, low, high? She's working. Anywho, an inspection from July 10th, 1971 for a 61 Ford had 84,000 miles on it then when it was 10 years old. $3.13 by Fred's Auto Service. Needed to adjust the uh, lights, otherwise everything passed. Wipers, exhaust, brakes, steering, suspension, tires, wheels, horn. Does horn work? Nope. Glass, glazing, mirror, and body metal. South Dakota had these. I don't think North Dakota ever had safety inspections. Looks like John R. Dunewald. I think there's some Dunewalds in the uh, Cathedral in the Prairie area. Whatever the name of that town is. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Another safety inspection we can't read anymore. That was John Dunewald, and this is Arnold or Carol Dunewald. Hoven! That's the Cathedral in the Prairie area. Sure enough. For the 72 registration. And there's a uh, 73 registration from Arnold Dunewald. My bad, 71. Better hang on to those. Probably five has got something to make a house out of. Well shoot, we're about ready to go for a test drive. I guess we could uh, maybe check through my list. Patch some holes in the floor. Those wouldn't be too bad. But I know how that snowballs. I do, I do. You do too, don't you, Duff? It's always more than you expect. Okay. <clears throat> I was gonna start. You want me to crack your window? I know how you like the windows down here. You ready to go on another test drive or what? So here's the deal, kids. We went on two test drives, totaling about 40 miles yesterday in the unibody. And a uh, good old GoPro. Decided to freeze up just like in the uh, 62 F100 4x4 video. First trip we uh, put about 25-ish miles round trip, did some nice ice donuts, picked up a chemical tote, hauled that home in the back, brought that home, cut the top out to uh, put scrap in, you know, because we're all about recycling totes and old pickups and scrap iron. So you're welcome Greta. And the next one we just uh, did basically the same exact test drive again. Went to a different place, got home, found out that the uh, video froze, so hopefully they don't freeze this time. It was about 28 degrees yesterday, it's about 10 degrees today, and the heater's not that good. So hopefully it starts, and hopefully we don't freeze. Right, Duff? Should we go for a ride? Oh, yeah. Here, let's crack this, just so you can get some frosty breaths outside and not freeze up the windows. 
find out. Let me get this started first. Choke, a couple pumps. Take straight off. So you guys know how this test drive is gonna go basically on what I told you. We put 40 miles on yesterday, but hey, anything could happen. It's an old pickup. This vinyl seat is cold on the behind. Don't know about a quarter tank of yeah. gas. Be a bad idea to top that off, huh? So, like I said before, first gear is super tall in this thing, so you really gotta slip the clutch. Oh, that's the biggest downfall of this pickup is that transmission. Hey, I don't know why Ford uh, designed this transmission with such a tall first gear. Oh, can't find a groin. It didn't do that yesterday. It's because the oil's so cold in there today. And B, I don't know why any salesman would push this transmission on a person because you couldn't use this vehicle for around town unless you had like some super tall 513 gears in it without smoking a clutch every six months. And uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be all right if you were doing over the road stuff all the time, but why even have it? And then first or third gear, is a one to one ratio, same as any other transmission other than an overdrive. So you can only do, when I mean, you can do a 65, 70 in this thing, but you're really pushing it. It likes 55, 60. So the transmission is the major downfall. I would like to find a three speed overdrive. So if anybody's got one of those, they're uh, looking to part with. Uh, the drive shaft's got a big ding in it anyway. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to shorten that up for a different synchronized first gear nope I'm guessing we'll have to shorten up that drive shaft for an overdrive anyway so not a big deal it's got a big buoy in it but it'd be cool to find a three-speed overdrive that more or less just bolts in place if there is such a thing I don't know I think it's got to be from a 56 and later so it's got the 12 volt solenoid on it otherwise you can put a 12 volt solenoid but then you gotta find that transmission to get the solenoid off of anyway so let's well find the right one to start well, yeah uh rear end's got to be gone through it needs kingpins obviously it needs some bigger tires in the front it rides like a lumber wagon part of it's that straight axle and part of it's just this huge stack of leaves in the back so we're gonna put some petrol in Check to make sure our cameras are still doing camera things. And then we'll be on our way with this test drive, right, Doug? Right. He's not shaking because he's cold, he's shaking with excitement. All right, which way are we going this time? Yeah, you can do like 30 miles an hour in first gear in this thing. Temp gauge says 160, so she warmed up nice. Turn the defrost on, but really all it does is make so much of noise. I don't know if the heater core is bad, or if that more motor is in there backwards, but it seems like it's moving air. Tailgate latch leaves a bit to be desired, mainly the design and partly because it's bowed and screwed up, so that might just drop open on us, because that's what happened on the second test drive. A lot of wind noise, a lot of rattles. Wind noise doesn't bother me, because usually I'm driving these things in the summer. And I got the windows down, and it's actually quieter with the windows down than it is with them up, whistling through those tight cracks. Not having carpet makes it A louder and B in the winter, more heat comes, or uh, in the winter, heat doesn't stay in in the summer, heat doesn't stay out, so it would be nice to find a rubber floor mat put in here. But it should fix those holes in the floor, that would also help uh, keep some of the heat in as well. Yeah, we're barely out of town, and I mean, this thing's singing. We're probably doing 55 miles an hour. I know. She's not a highway cruiser, no. She's not good around town. It's just that dead transmission. Hey, I got a guy. Come on now. You got your own camera over there. Can we roll your window up for you? Is it too cold or what? Yeah, brakes aren't great. It doesn't steer bad. It just 
those kink pins, I'm sure, are not going to keep it from wearing tires. That's pretty straight. Just the left a bit. Steer's super good. I just really think this thing needs a independent front suspension. Dodge Dakota doesn't look like it. You get power rack and pinion, power disc brakes. You get it nice and low. You'll be able to overdrive. As much as I'd like to put a Ford in it, you just can't find it. Like a 302 or a 351 around here. And if you do, your buddy sells you one. And uh, it's got a massive amount of blow by. So thanks for that, Tucker. Carburetor 351 with a uh, AOD automatic overdrive. That would be ideal. Josh, you see the rooster over there? But I just can't find that stuff. And they go fuel injected, like coyotes or big bucks, the four sixes have like no aftermarket support. Yeah. Just the old like EFI stuff is not good. See if they let us go. There's some uh, snow drifts up here. A little driftage. Oh boy. Nobody's cleaning the township roads, Doug. So yeah, unfortunately, it's probably going to get a LS with a 4 L80. Stuff, you're really, you're really fogging up the window over there. Oh. This is good. And we're buried. Well, that was fun. I thought we could make it through, but uh, the straight axle pushed a little snow. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. And we're right in the middle. Well, should we call Pookie? Can I get my door open even? Oh yeah, barely. Don't worry. Duff is fine after our incident. He's over there looking for something to bury. Since I buried the pickup. Whoops. I think we uh pushing a bunch of the straight axle. Needs some taller tires up front. Right up to the bumper. Packed her all under the hood. This is the uh joys you get of living in Podunk, North Dakota. Should have stayed on the uh, main path, I guess. Third test drive's a charm. Pookie's just up the road ice fishing, so he's gonna give us the old Saskatchewan yank, as Quick Dick would say. This is Quick Dick McDick reminding you to keep a clevis in your hitch and keep your pickup out of the ditch. She's in there good. Oh, good thing we didn't lower it yet. We made her almost halfway though, huh, Duff? Hopefully he's got a shovel so we can hook onto the axle. I'm guessing he's coming from that way. We were going downhill even. First time getting stuck in a test drive, I guess. So there's that. Don't look like we screwed nothing up yet. What are you doing way up there? Are you walking home without me? Probably Poogie's got some heat in that thing. These uh, mechanics gloves. They're not good for the cold. What are you digging up back there? This is not Hoover Schneef. Boy, are you fast. You don't like the cold either, do you? If you're gonna dig anything, dig that pickup out. That'd be great. No? Not so much? You're a goof. You're a goof. Why do you like the snow so much? You're a crazy dog. I'm freezing my fingers off and you're biting it. No, dig the pickup out. The pickup. Dig that out. This doggy is something else. Keeps me entertained while we're waiting for help. This would be about a three and a half mile walk home, something like that. One, two, oh, only two and a quarter. Three ish to the shop. It's with the digging, come on. Crazy dog. Yeah, we brought no rope, no shovel, no tools. 
didn't do you ever plan on getting stuck oh yeah i'm sure people do i've probably done it too not warm gloves <sighs> not a good idea not one of our brighter ideas good news is the cameras both appear to be working so you guys are getting some real solid content out of this should have had the 62 4 by 4 shifted that into low range we'd have blasted right through this he says he's almost here but uh he didn't bring a shovel but he forgot it in the fish house and i said we got a digging machine here but he doesn't dig them in the right spots so this is gonna get interesting i got a feeling hopefully the road's better the other way we got a full tank of gas anywho Oh, there he is, right there. He came from the other way. What a guy. What would your dad say right now? Yeah, I would be so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just bonsai her in there. On this episode of Mark's Gear Repair. <laughs> the dumb things Duff's like, oh yeah, you got this. Duff's the man. Good call, Duff. <laughs> Should we go back and get a shovel? I don't know what we're going to hook onto either here. I got a hook, and put it right there. If we rip that off, it, I guess it rips off. <laughs> I got a rope that has a oh, hook okay. on one end and a hook on the other. God, look at that glorious mullet. Stupid things we get into. Good bumper, huh, pal? Dust gonna watch from a distance. One little booger in it. Oh yeah. That's not bad at all. It just gives it more of an antique look to her. Oh yeah, that was there. That was there before. We could straighten that out. I wouldn't straighten it. Look at look at all the Oh I bet the under the hood's just packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, she was she was deep, kids. Oh my gosh. Wreck my new radiator on top of the air cleaner oh my gosh oh good thing i just pressure washed that engine you know <laughs> oh duff you're a digging machine you're a gentleman and a scholar pookie oh yeah just the straight axle just graded her real nice didn't it duff until uh so that there's where a yank stopped and there's where a yank stopped, and there's where one stopped, and there's where we stopped completely. I think we could have made it. I think we take a run at it. We'll get at this next one. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good idea. Now we got to figure out how to get her turned around and get back out of here. He says if he can get a suburban turnaround on this, I should be able to, no problem. It's probably right. Maybe. Maybe. He also doesn't have a three speed. And big 
wide drag slicks and we're stuck in the middle of the road. We can screw anything up. Dumbest pickup for the winter. Yeah, what'd you do that for? What up? Come on, Dump. Hey. Oh, are we done getting stuck for the day now? We did the yard walk around with all the stuff for sale. We got a 61 Impala 4 hard top to get rid of, a couple of cab overs. Always, uh, like we got rid of most of this stuff. 74 Camaro, 59 Ford truck cab on a chassis, and the uh, D100 service pickup. That's gotta go too. There you go. Get out of here, warm up. Well, there you have it. We got some more trash back on the road. Wasn't really that exciting, but. Appreciate you guys watching these so-called, I don't know, so-called project videos because yeah, it helps me get some of my projects done. Uh, well, it runs are fun, but it's kind of a headache. It's hard finding a car every week. It's a lot of work too, and you get nothing in the end. I mean, kind of, but it'd be good to have this one back on the road. So thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Check out down below the uh, Duff Approved. Join that for some behind the scenes action. And uh, check out some merchandise so we can keep the shop and uh, support my sandwich and Duff's treat addiction. Remember, doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Probably not gonna forget that test drive. Oh, silly Fords. On to the next one. What are we gonna do next week? I don't know. Maybe we'll put this front seal on that Ford. Or finish lowering and putting glass in that uh, 
two-wheel drive laser. I don't know, I need a sandwich after that. That Pook, he's a good kid jerking us out. Oh yeah, bushes, is, is, is. they go great with mullets. Oh, and little crappy <laughs> mustaches. They do it, work on it. <laughs> All the wheel speed at this first gear. 